Is it by political design that most of the crowd is off to the right? <laughs> Good afternoon. I must confess that an invitation to speak coming from an organization with the name Tea Party caused me no small consternation. You can imagine that that term conjures up some uncomfortable memories for me, as well as giving me a sense of anxious disquiet. But I was assured by a local well-placed and seemingly honest rebel named Piatkowski that I would not be arrested, at least not until next June. Allow me to welcome you to Amboy, once a jewel in the royal crown where I was privileged to serve as royal governor. It was a position I took most seriously and one in which I strived mightily to make the lives of the colonists better. I initiated the building of roads and bridges, began the science of agriculture, started the first Indian reservation, and initiated the inception of Queen's College in the village of New Brunswick in 1766. What, what is it? Sorry. I've been told that the institution has changed its name and will be playing another institution in a game called football from the vast Ohio wilderness on Monday. The contest is set for 4 p.m. Eastern, whatever that means. Are you? 234 years ago, Perth Amboy was a thriving, bustling colony of the British Crown, blossoming with opportunity for those who had the drive to succeed. Citizens enjoyed the benefits of British liberties and all the rights, privileges, and immunities thereunto appertaining. The colonies were growing economically, growing in population, and growing in power and influence. They were also growing restless, largely because of a group of outspoken rabble-rousers, similar to those assembled here today. And as a result, 233 years ago, a group of rebel colonists sporting weapons and led by a blackguard named Colonel Nathaniel Hurd marched to my home just three blocks from this very spot and on order of an illegal rebel government supported by just 30% of the colonists, unceremoniously accosted, insulted, and then arrested me. <laughs> what was my crime? Did I steal from the people? No. Did I use my position for criminal intent or personal gain? Most certainly not. Did I turn a deaf ear to the complaints of the citizens? I assuredly did not. I was arrested essentially for disagreeing with my father Benjamin whose portrait appears on your currency, mostly in the pockets of politicians, but these days not you. I know you Americans are fond of saying that Mr. Washington was figuratively the father of your country, but I suspect my own father could lay a legitimate claim to the title as well, literally, if you know your history. And for disagreeing with him, I was targeted for arrest. That's the thanks I get for running out with a kite and a key in that lightning storm that made him famous. <laughs> the representatives of the rebel government ignored my pleas and my common sense and acting on orders from their leaders took me away in fetters. To make matters worse, they celebrate the event here by reenacting the ignominious, traitorous act every year in June. At that time, I warned Perth Amboy's good people to be wary of the path they had set before them as it held many traps, but they did not listen. They claimed they were going to make a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. How is
is that working out for you now? It appears that history has now come full circle. Once again, the government's representatives seem to be ignoring the plaintive cries of their overburdened subjects. I can recall the absolutely untrue slogan used incessantly by the rebel hooligans when I was governor. No taxation without representation, they would chant. Well, to be sure, it's not taxation without representation that rankles the citizenry today. But you must forgive my smirk when I ask, not wholly innocently, how do you like your level of taxation with your so-called representation? Lousy. Do you like your government reaching directly into your purse and confiscating on an ever-expanding level what you have rightfully earned by your arduous labors? No! Do you like the idea that your money is taken from you before you even see it? No! And do you like the prospect of sacrificing even more of your earnings to an amorphous insatiable blob administered by an insulated ruling elite who are not beset by the same hardships you must endure. No. While I was governor here in Amboy, I would never have sanctioned such unconscionable usury on the people as I have been told exists today. Had I engaged in such thievery, the people would have risen up and revolted. Come to think of it, they did. <laughs> and my arrest should serve as an example to those who fail to heed the voice of the people. I now beg your leave to retreat back into the mists of history. Rest assured, I will be watching with great interest what transpires here. Please forgive my occasional snicker. May God Almighty be with you all. You will need him. Sorry, he's not to be arrested until next June. Okay. I don't know how many. By the way, if you're.